Hey guys, welcome back. It's Lucid, and we're jumping back into our game with Early Age Yomi. It's turn 13, and uh, I've got turn 14, which is my current turn, and we're going to do both of those in these episodes. So, okay, uh, without further ado, we have a message from Abyssia. Uh, throughout life, one has many choices. Do you steal that candy bar? Do you pay that parking meter fine? Even though nobody is likely to ticket you, of course you do. You're a good citizen of the Pancor system. Elves, however, do not. They steal from chicken or from children. They jaywalk. They go over the speed limit and they even cut the line. How horrific! We, as virtuous citizens of the Pancor system, must put a stop to these atrocities. Kind of humorous. Okay. Uh, so from uh, this one site, we find two sites. One is this, which is giving us ever so valuable earth gems, and the second is the windswept catacombs, which gives us a death gem and an air gem. And our, our income is actually getting up quite high in air. Uh, we're at four air income, which is wildly high for Yomi. Uh, and we're at seven death, which is quite nice. So uh, we've site searched here. We're gonna go ahead and move and attack the uh, this province up here with this Yomi. <clears throat> Let's watch the battles. So Lanka is attacking. I didn't really go over his orders last turn because uh, we can't see them, so I think we're just going to find out about Lanka's uh, attack orders as we go. Okay. So he cleans up there. It does not appear Fomoria was expecting an attack in that province. Here he's bringing uh, just a few dudes, and they're kind of working on a hope and a prayer. Uh, and unfortunately for Lanka, this is the prophet of Fomoria here. And he's got Smite Demon, which is going to do a lot of damage. Okay, like, snipes that guy. And the problem is, these guys are... Uh, they, they were in a very small group, like a squad of less than five, so... Uh, they can take, basically, morale checks all the time, and uh, if they fail, they're going to rout, which is what happened here. Uh, so he actually fails this, even though it was minimal PD, but that one Prophet uh, really did some work there. Now, uh, in terms of our attacks, uh, we're attacking this province where I was hoping we would bump with Fomoria, but we didn't. It's just some Barbarians, and uh, they are going to be no match for the Dione. And uh, we do attack Fomoria here, but with Barbarians. And this is a little risky. If you move the Giants in, they would probably kill them. But I don't think that's going to happen. And it didn't. Uh, he also could have done a PD dump, and that would have saved us. But again, kind of unlikely unless he was putting a fort up. So we take that. Uh, I don't think it says whether there were any forts here. Yeah, it doesn't say. Uh, we have some events. We got some Fire Gems. We got some Earth Gems, and we got uh, a very bad event where we lost a bunch of population, got a ton of unrest. Uh, that was in this province, which we just took, uh, and we lost gold. So if I had left this in Fomoria's hands, uh, I would have lost out on this wonderful aid income, uh, but I would have gained the 80 gold that I lost. So anyway, very unfortunate. Um, I don't think that did the... yeah, that... I wonder if there was... Yeah, I don't think that's responsible for this death. So we have death scales here. Which means there's probably a well of pestilence or something. Uh, I don't... Okay, this guy has a disease. I don't see a ton of diseases here, so I'm not sure if we have a well of pestilence or not. We, we might not be able to tell this turn, but... Uh, anyway, we're going to work on patrolling some of this unrest down. This is just too high. Um, <clears throat> and I don't want these guys running in and inadvertently dying. I'd rather my Dione do the fighting. And these guys do the fort cracking. So they're going to sit here and patrol. We're going to join them up with another group. Um, importantly, this guy has mountain survival, and this guy does not. So this guy is going to lead my archers. Um, and this guy is going to lead my Barbarians, who also have Mountain Survival, and my Bakamono, who have Mountain Survival. Uh, and from here, they will actually be able to move in and siege this fort, because they can go through the Mountain Pass, but my other dudes will not. So they'll probably sit around doing something else. Uh, meanwhile, this guy, my Ghost General, is bringing some more troops down. And, uh, yeah, eventually he will meet up. 
Though these guys are probably going to lay siege, hopefully, if, if everything goes well, uh, before these guys catch up with them. Um, in terms of the landscape, his prophets here, uh, I don't know what he's going to try to defend this with. These giants could make it there, because they have very high map move. And uh, they will be able to move two provinces. So potentially, he could attack with the giants. Now, uh, if that was the case, like if he was going to attack, I would need both my Dione. If not, I only need to send one. So sending two is a little overkill because I would like to have one sit here in sight search. Um, but anyway, we're moving two to be safe. The other thing that's nice about moving two is I can potentially attack multiple provinces from here next turn. But anyway, we'll find out. Um, Lanka has another bandit attack here because he's just getting attacked by bandits all over the place. Hopefully this will teach him to uh, put six PD in provinces. Like in this case, this might not be a great province to put six PD in because the Fomorian giants are going to probably just kill something. Um, because there's a big doom stack of Fomorian giants here, led by a Fomorian king. Um, and Lanka, we talked about what he should do. He's going to doom stack up right here. Um, because these giants are pretty scary. Like, doom stacking up here would be a problem because these giants would probably kill his army. So we're going to have to be pretty careful in how we deal with it. Ideally, I get some gear on a Dione more than I have, and I kill the doom stack because that way we'll keep his sacreds around. Uh, because he's going to be kind of high attrition in a fight against Fomoria. But uh, if he takes a fight in a province where he also has a fair amount of PD that will soak up some of the giant's attacks, because giants aren't that killy uh, with large number of humans, uh, then his demons will do enough damage to kind of chew through them. <clears throat> so he's going to kind of consolidate an attack here. I'm going to attack up here. Uh, I think... I can't remember if he attacks this province or not. I think he does. I think he has enough... Yeah, yeah, he has nine here... And then I think he has one here. I, I don't think he can move this one. I think he's just moving the nine in right here, and they'll be able to attack, uh, and that will be good enough. <clears throat> and he's going to be moving these guys out. So uh, that is basically it for this turn. Um, in terms of research, next turn we will be at, uh, at Conjuration 3, which actually, you know... Uh, I need to update my script, because I think I submitted it, and I have not updated my script yet. Yeah, so uh, anyway, let's go ahead and pull up the next turn. And this is my current turn, so we do need to update our scripts, too, because I don't think I did the Earth Power, which I should have now. Uh, research and Conjuration is complete, so that is going to give me... Uh, alteration. Oh, I didn't do diplomacy. Let's go back real quick and, and show the message I sent to... You know, I may actually be missing... I think I sent him a message back on turn 12. I'll just tell you what I said if I don't have it here. Okay. Um, so I sent a message to uh, Agartha, who I think popped up in turn uh, 12. And, uh, and I said, hey dude, um, I saved this Bone Tribe uh, exit to your little moon planet up there so you could get off of it without having to fight me. Uh, but, yeah, you probably don't want to fight me and Lanka on this big planet. You probably want to go help your partner Hinnom out on his planet. Uh, and Hinnom's planet is most likely this one. Because he spawned here, he's going to be next to his partner. So, basically that means Hinnom probably has to spawn here. Like, probably this is Hinnom's start position somewhere, like, right here. Um, though it could be, I think there's two or three start positions on this planet, so it could be like here or here, I don't know. But Hinnom is over here, so Agartha could either pick a fight with Lanka and me down here, or he could go help his partner. So I was like, you probably want to help your partner, and I didn't attack this, because I knew if I attacked this, you would have to fight me to get out, and I left this open for you. Plus, Bone Triber, little bastards. So, I could kill him now, but I think at the time I only had Stone skin, like now that I have iron skin, I could probably take them, but these guys are nasty. Anyway, so he's replying, and he says, uh, Greetings, Oogity Boogity. 
Thank you for your kind words and consideration. Your good intentions are made clear by your restraint. I have no desire to fight you or your ally. I do indeed plan to join Hinnom and share in the bounties of the land they find themselves in. Um, I'm interested in your offer of peaceful cooperation and will discuss it with my ally. Good luck and may the coming years bring prosperity to our nations and those of our allies. Uh, Lixia of Agartha, however you say that. He says, to clarify, as I current as things currently stand, I can reach and I'm through the Bone Tribe. If uh, my path closes, I may want to further discuss uh, your offer of passage, which um, I can't help him with. Uh, this, If he wants to get this way, he has to go through this province. I mean, he could get to this province through going this way, but he has to go through this province, and the only way it could get blocked off is if someone else takes this and moves up this way. So... Um, I'm going to respond back to him and just say, I've spoken with Lanka and he's fine with the longer term peace agreement. Shall we nap three for the time being? And then I say, also, uh, what do you know of your neighbors? I know Zabalba's on the ring world to our left, but I don't have much other intel yet. Uh, I did get some other intel from Steam, uh, just chatting with people that uh, I think that... Uh, oh God, who is it that's down here? Saramadia and uh, their partner, which is... Who is Saramadia uh, partners with? Kalisa. Uh, they are both down here on this planet. So, yeah. That's the only other intel I have. I'm not really going to share that yet. Um, anyway, let's get back to Abyssia. We have our message. Uh, if you want to read uh, more uh, Elven hate mail, here you go. Pause it. Uh, okay, uh, so Conjuration finished. We have some battles. We're attacking from Moria here. So Lanka is attacking. Uh, he still has his... Um, his Prophet here. And... Uh, that is not going to be sufficient against these guys. Okay, and he tries to run. Okay, and the Prophet does run, so we'll see. Uh, it, it doesn't show retreat details. We'll have to see if he retreated successfully by looking in uh, neighboring provinces. Uh, Lanka attacks Fomoria here. So this was the big consolidation he did where he brought in two groups. So you can see he has two people blessing, uh, about 20 Palankshas, which uh, is kind of a lot. And that should work. Uh, and then we are attacking. We'll attack some indies up here. This will be pretty quick. I'll just speed through this. I think we know how that goes. Uh, and then we are attacking Fomoria here with our two Dione. And it's just a little PD, so we're going to win that. Um... <clears throat> We also had an event where we got Black Steel Plate and Boots of the Long Stride. And that is actually quite nice because uh, what that means, this Black Steel Plate is kind of good. It's got two encumbrance, so uh, it's significantly better than our four encumbrance armor. Um, and it's still pretty high in defense. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a lab here. Now, my partner is going to be manufacturing a lot of items this turn, and he'll be sending them to me next turn when I have a lab up. Or maybe he was sent, I can't remember, yeah. I think he's probably sending them to me this turn. Maybe he was making them last turn. Either way, we're building a lab. When I get the items, we're gonna throw them on this. The items that we're getting, um, He's making me some better armor that's not for encumbrance, or it's actually shittier armor, but lower encumbrance. Um, and what else is he making? Okay, yeah, he's making me two different lightweight armors. I think one of the air lightweight armors, which is only one encumbrance. Uh, and then I think he's making me an astral armor with his, uh, with his disciple. Uh, and then he's making me one of the boots, the, the Construction 2 Nature Boots that give you Force Survival and 2 Reinvigoration. Uh, and those, I, the armor is going to be good for kind of whoever, but uh, one of these guys has uh, unequaled obesity. 
I think this guy. And what that means is he gets a lot of extra encumbrance. Uh, later in the game it's not going to matter, but right now it matters a lot. Um, so this guy needs some reinvigoration. Now, uh, and actually I'm really glad we checked this because we have summon earth power now. So we need to do summon earth power and then we need to do probably blessing and then we need to do iron skin and then we need to do Now I'm looking at, do I have resist light? I do have resist lightning. Maybe I do that. Highly unlikely he hits me with a ton of lightning bolts though. And I'm going to have 5 shock resistance. Or I could have 10. I mean, there is a chance. I, he does not have, I don't know. Okay. What's my protection going to be? We've got to change this script up. So, my protection's really high. Uh, okay, so I think because my protection's so high, I'm only basically going to be getting like an additional two protection from doing iron skin instead of stone skin. So I think we're going to do stone skin. Uh, and then... We're going to do Skeletal Body, since we're probably going to be fighting Pierce Weapons. Formoria has a lot of Spears. And then we're going to hold one turn, uh, and then fire. And this will probably take this out. Uh, we're not going to kill a ton of stuff, but everybody's going to run up and they're probably going to die. The only thing I have to make sure is I don't die to Lightning, which uh, I think we're safe from. The other thing he could potentially do is Skeletal Spam, but uh, if he has a bunch of P... I'm not really that worried about it. And I'm going to be... Not quite fatigue neutral, but I'll be kind of close. Yeah. So anyway, I think that's probably fine. Uh, okay, so anyway, that's the script. Let's actually save this. Um, this guy who's going to be chilling out here building a lab, we'll give him the same script. Um... He can't really attack me, but I think, yeah, that's probably fine. At some point I may switch this to Iron Skin, but I'm not sure. Versus a Lightning Nation, it's pretty risky. The only, uh, Thunderstrike isn't going to be coming out, which is of course the big danger. It's very unlikely he went straight to Evocation 4. Uh, but it's totally possible he has Evocation 2, or that he has a Thug equipped with like a Construction 2 air weapon. So, uh, anyway, this is a fair amount of damage. It's 14. With Shock Resistance 5, uh, it will block this, but I'm going to still get hit pretty hard by this uh, armor negating attack. So, having 10 Shock Resistance will make this basically inconsequential. So, I think, we'll, I think we're safer doing that, even though it means we might get hit a tiny bit harder by some of the dudes. So, anyway, this, this guy is going to come in. Our dude who is... Uh, a bit more risky to commit to a big fight because he's not going to be anywhere close to fatigue neutral. Uh, he's going to hang back uh, and he will get probably the first kit uh, of stuff uh, and then we'll send him in. So we might do like a swap -roo where I swap who's on top of the fort next turn. Uh, I'm also moving uh, a bunch of Barbarians in, so I can do all sorts of different swap -roos, but it'll depend on, like, I could put the Barbarians here, pull both Super Combatants back. We'll see. That may be what I do. Uh, like, if there's not anybody who looks like they're going to attack, I may just commit the Barbarians to start knocking down the Fort Wall, and then he's going to be like, oh, there's Barbarians, and I'll put the Super Combatants back in. We'll do some switcheroos here. Um... Lanka is in a bit of a tricky situation. I think he's probably going to do a PD dump here and move some troops in to defend. Um, and with a PD dump and 30 sacreds, which will be the com combined force uh, of this group, he should be able to kill 20 giants. Though he'll take some losses, but at that point Fomori is basically done and it's just a land grab to get down here to the bottom. So, yeah. Anyway, that's going to be a really good start for us to have a whole planet. We'll then get to pick who do we think we want to fight uh, after that. For me, 
Uh, Zabalba would be a very good matchup for me in the early game. Uh, I fought uh, Yomi as Zabalba. Uh, I eventually won, but uh, it was at great cost, and it cost me so much that uh, I lost the game. So, I mean, I won against Yomi as Zabalba, but, I mean, it was so brutal that I just... We basically destroyed each other, except technically I destroyed him while somebody else was busy winning the game. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, that's definitely, I think, a good matchup for me. Uh, and the other option I can figure out who's down here, maybe Zabalba, may not be, don't know. But I could potentially come down here and attack on this planet, and that will get me down here onto this uh, to this world, and we could go that way. Uh, but having this whole planet locked down and not to have to worry about raiding will be kind of huge. Um, and we, if we have this planet and this, a lot of, like, especially if we can take over this whole planet, we're basically going to win. Uh, but what, we need to figure out the diplomatic landscape. We need to see where Zabalba and his partner is. And then, you know, like, if we can find people that are split up on different planets, that will definitely determine who we attack. But right now, uh, Fomoria could pull out some... Oh, we need to talk about their Bless, too. We didn't talk about that. So their Bless is Attack 2, uh, Blood Surge. Uh, Blood Surge is not going to be great against us because they're not going to be killing a lot of our stuff. Uh, attack 2 is okay. Um, but... We were trying to figure out what chassis he took, because those are Fire 4, Blood 4. We're trying to figure out what chassis would he have picked, and uh, what we realized is there's a pretender called Esus, and that pretender has uh, Nature, Blood, and Fire, and we figured, okay, that's obviously what he did. He picked it and didn't rename it. So uh, what we expect is that he has a dormant nature bless and the nature bless is either regeneration and it should be coming out like any turn now it's either regeneration or it's recuperation recuperation would be like you know for super combatants or tartarians probably we think it's regeneration so he's probably been holding off on fighting us uh until he has regeneration which is probably like any turn now so um, it's possible that he attacks here. It's also possible, and I think this is probably more likely, that he's going to attack. Actually, I think this is what Lanka is going to do. I think he's going to move here and do a PD dump in this province. This province has heavy calf PD, which is nice, but I think Lanka is going to move here because I think this is the move we're expecting from Fomoria. And we might want to fight him before he has the regeneration bless, which is what we think is coming up. So I think he's actually moving here and doing a PD dump. And we're expecting, because he does not have his Incarnate Bless up, that he's going to be retreating until it comes up, and then he'll push forward. So that is kind of the plan. Um, and then, yeah, so this guy's building a lab, and I think that's it. Um, up here, we're sight-searching... Uh, we're site searching here. I'm searching Lanka's land. If you didn't know, you can site search your disciples' land. Um, messages going out to Agartha. Already showed you those. So I think that's about it. Um, I'll actually I'll talk about my strategy here. This is uh, why I'm going for construction three. We're going to kind of abuse a weird mechanic. Um, and that mechanic is, if you put Bracers of Protection, they're going to give you uh, head and body protection. And if you cast the Legions of Steel on a unit, basically what it's going to do is it's going to go through all of your armor, and it's going to increase protection of all the protections it sees. I don't know how that interacts with shields, but it's definitely going to do it on all the normal armor, which will include Bracers of Protection. And what that's going to mean is that even with crappy armor on, my guy's going to go into the high 30s of protection without even casting Iron Skin. And then with Iron Skin, he'll get into the 40s. Or like, to 40, because it caps at 40. You can't go higher than that. So, 
Uh, yeah, they're going to be extremely hard to kill. Um, but to get them fatigue neutral, I'm also going to need to give them crappy body armor that doesn't have so much encumbrance. Um, and then once Holy Scourges come out, which are the thing you use to kill Dione, uh, and I'm going to be uploading these videos kind of well after the fact, because in the case that people don't know that you use Holy Scourges to kill Dione, I don't really want people in the game watching it and then figuring it out from this video. But I assume by like turn 30 or 40, whenever I do upload these videos, that uh, everybody in the game is going to know that. Um, yeah, so anyway. Uh, and whoever doesn't know it will eventually figure it out, because uh, if this battle goes well and we take over this planet, maybe we take over another one, uh, very quickly people are going to start working together to kill us. And uh, anyway, if that happens, then it's going to be very true. It's, it's almost impossible to get Dione to survive uh, even a mediocrely kitted thug that has Holy Scourges. And the reason is because those weapons are going to do like 70 to 90 damage to a Dione. So if you have 40 protection, they don't care. They're still going to almost one hit you. Um, there's only a few ways to counter it. One is getting the defense up really high. So I may do something like two main goshes, and then uh, the Bracers of Protection also increase defense. So it's possible to have like a 30 defense Dione that's going to have very high protection. So he could survive uh, a hit, and he's unlikely to be hit, but he wouldn't survive like two hits. So not sure, but that would probably work, and then they would have to like heavily commit to that thug, and then if I kill the thug, then they lose a bunch of gear. So I don't know. Uh, and it's actually not a ton of gems, especially if I have hammers to do something like that. Uh, anyway. But, uh, you are going to see game-breakingly strong Dione this game, I promise that. Uh, I do not know how they will hold up, because the, the thing about Yomi is that you can counter Dione, especially if you know what you're doing. And once you have them countered, then it's like, what does Yomi do? Uh, so we're going to ride them harder than you would normally see them being ridden for the early part of the game with like ridiculously overpowered game-breaking stuff on the protection front uh, and defense front. So it's going to be very hard for them to counter uh, these Dione at the beginning. Um, and then once they can be countered, uh, I'm going to try to judge when that point is and use them very sparingly. Uh, and mostly use them as casters for an army. So, uh, but right now I don't really have an army. Like, what army am I going to use? Well, i got to get all my temple infrastructure up. Uh, and it's not up yet. So anyway, once it's up, that's the plan. But right now, uh, we are going to be doing crazy shit with Dione. Um, so I hope you are ready for that. And uh, it should be a lot of fun. So I think that's about it for this. Oh, let's make sure I got all my guys with the new script, the Summon Earth Power script. Thank you for playing. Um, is that all my Diony? No. So I think that's about it. Let's make sure. Okay. Earth Power, Blessing, Stone Skin, Skeletal Body, Hold Fire. Okay. Should be good. Thank you guys. See you next time.